Steven, we can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, our, our theme for the year. All right, good evening and congratulations to the U32 class of 2021. I'm Steven Dellinger-Pate, U32's principal, and I want to welcome parents, caregivers, 
grandparents, siblings, family, friends, and everyone else who's joining or viewing our ceremony tonight. Has to be the largest crowd in central Vermont in at least 15 months. And it is so wonderful to see your smiling faces. I also want to take special notice of our location today. If you see on our press box or on our scoreboard, you are sitting around or inside of the Chaplin Topping Track in honor of two of our long-term teachers, one who is retiring this year and one who retired last. And so at this time, I would ask that you stand if able for the singing of the national anthem by Delaney Hill and Bethany Atwood. Thank you, Delaney and Bethany. At this time, I would like to welcome our superintendent, Brian Olkowski, to the podium to give a few remarks to tonight's graduates. Good evening, everyone. Before I begin, I just want to also, uh, let's give another round of applause for Delaney and Bethany. That was a beautiful rendition. Before I begin, I, there are some folks I would like to acknowledge here tonight. Uh, we first of all have our, some of our esteemed Board of Education members here tonight. So I just wanted to uh, say, my extend my uh, thanks for this work that we've had through this very challenging year. So uh, Floor Diaz Smith, Scott Thompson, Kari Broadley, Jonathan Goddard, and I think I saw or heard that Vera Frazier was here as well, but I also wanted to acknowledge them and thank them for being here tonight. I would also like to thank Stephen Dellinger Pate, principal of U32 and the amazing U32 administrative team and the amazing administrative, amazing teachers and staff for U32 here tonight. So thank you uh, for your support throughout this year. I would also like to thank our parents and families because without you, these future graduates wouldn't be here tonight. So thank you for all of your hard work and dedication, not only this year, but throughout their entire lives. So thank you. And last but not certainly not least, it is a pleasure to be here tonight to deliver this a uh, quick little speech regarding the class of 2021 and this year. Watching you step out into the world, whether you're heading off to college, joining the workforce, entering the military, taking a gap year, or just exploring your options, standing up here today means a great deal to me. 
and I know it means even more to your teachers, administrators, aides, volunteers, and others who have watched your progress over these past years. But this year, graduation is even more special because all of you here sitting today, through your hard work, your efforts, your perseverance, your patience, certainly your senses of humor, and all of you have just overcame every challenge and obstacle thrown at you since the beginning of this once in a lifetime pandemic. And I can assure you, class of 2021, this will be long be remembered for its adaptability and tenacity of this amazing class. I would like to open my official remarks this evening with a personal thank you and congratulations to your principal, Stephen Dellinger Pate, who also just happens to be Vermont's 2021 Principal of the Year. You do not earn that title that kind of recognition just sitting behind a desk. You earn it by being where you need to be and who you need to be whenever it is needed, whatever it happens to be in that moment. And if anyone embodies everything a principal is meant to be, an educator, a leader, a visionary, an advisor, and maybe most importantly, a friend, it is our very own Stephen Dellinger Pate. Thank you, Stephen, for guiding this school through so many changes and challenges over the past year, especially Act 77, Act 46, and what else? Uh, how about the most craziest and challenging pandemic we've had in our lifetime? So thank you, Stephen, for your leadership. And to the class of 2021, it is my hope that U32 High School has prepared you for the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. And let me assure you, there will be plenty of both. Knowing the dedication and the commitment of the people who've taught you, mentored you, guided you, scolded you sometimes, congratulated you, and very likely sat up at night worrying about you, I have no doubt whatsoever that you are ready to face whatever the world will be throwing at you in the future. As you leave here today, I hope you will keep doing your best work. I hope you will look to the future with confidence and anticipation. And I hope you will live every day of your life with a sense of gratitude and appreciation. Take the opportunities that come your way with confidence and face your challenges in the same way. You'll discover that both of them will give you opportunities to learn and grow. Offer your friendship to those who need a friend, be kind, and always be mindful of and open to peoples whose opinions, politics, beliefs, and values are different from your own. Through them, you'll learn many wonderful and profound life lessons. But most of all, be true to yourself. The road of life takes many twists and turns. Some you can prepare for, others will take you by surprise. And we know what we're talking about by surprise. But if you hold fast to your values and beliefs, you'll find not only that they'll carry you through the toughest of times, but when you look in the mirror, you'll like the person looking back at you. George Bernard Shaw, an Irish playwright and critic, once wrote, the reasonable person adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable person persists in trying to adapt the world to themselves. Therefore, all progress depends on the, on, on the unreasonable person. Sometimes holding fast to our values and beliefs makes us seem a little unreasonable. But it is those moments that real life progress can be made. Finally, I would like to say that everybody here today, as well as to so many people who could not be here, first and foremost, I would like to thank our dedicated teachers and staff. They gave so much over this past year to get us to today. We couldn't have done it without their sacrifice and selfless dedication to each and every student here at U32. 
in every sense of the word they are heroes and you have been my heroes this year and while i may not have said it enough i do certainly do mean it and will mean it to the last of my days i would also like to thank to our school directors here today and not here today businessmen and women who've offered their time and expertise to help you prepare for life after high school, to our communities for supporting us year after year, and especially to our parents who juggled jobs, postponed vacations, did the daily temperature checks, kept you safe, and did whatever was asked of them to keep our schools open and running smoothly. You are the reason we were at only one of five school districts in Vermont to remain open for instruction this past year, and we are profoundly grateful. But my biggest thank goes to the class of 2021. Thank you for stepping up this past year. Thank you for taking care of your friends and taking care of each other. Thank you for making the best of one of the most difficult and challenging years in American history. And thank you for never giving up. If you bring that same determination and positivity with you into the world, I have no doubt whatsoever that you will succeed in all that you do. Have a great summer class of 2021 and congratulations. Thanks, Brian. So when we began this year, I couldn't even imagine standing here before you without a mask at the largest gathering in 15 months. And this is a day that I'm proud to celebrate with you. There are countless people to thank for their work to get us and you our graduates at this point in life. And I particularly want to thank the wonderful staff at U32 who have worked with this graduating class to help them reach this milestone. We have a bunch of them sitting here and a few that are interspersed throughout this this uh, hillside and I just really appreciate all the work of this staff to make us to get us to this point. So as we begin to experience a post-COVID world here in Vermont, we should remember that we are privileged in many ways. Our community has done what is necessary to keep us safe and healthy this year and I want to encourage each of our graduates to give back to that community that has supported you throughout your education. We want you to take the lessons learned in your time at U32 and continue to build communities that are kind, supportive, uh, and inclusive. I could not have ever imagined the challenges that this class faced and ultimately conquered. There are no doubts in my mind that the graduating class of 2021 is ready to fulfill the vision of U32. You have the passion, creativity, and power to contribute to both our local and global communities. And as I stand at this podium now, I have new images of who you are and what you will become. You are going to be some of the most resilient graduates that U32 has ever produced. You are going to enter a world that is struggling right now with issues of race, poverty, and disease, and you are going to make a difference. I know that there is no challenge that you are not ready for because you have faced and conquered all the challenges that you have faced so far. I can think of no better group of students to send into the world right now to make a difference. Remember what you have learned during the last several years, both in and out of the classroom. U32 in the greater central Vermont community has prepared you well for your next challenge. The entire faculty and staff of U32 is proud of you and we wish you the best as you embark on the, your next challenge. So congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. And at this time, I would like to introduce our student speaker, Nathaniel Allen Rice. Hi guys. You know, I was originally going to bring my goats here, but there's a strict anti-goat policy at school, so no graduation goats, unfortunately. What a year, huh? Or what a weird couple of years, I guess. Uh, uh, don't worry, this isn't going to be like a, oh, in these trying times speech. I'm sick to death of those. I'm sure everyone won't remember our schooling fondly. To be completely honest, I don't blame you. 
Um, there are aspects that I remember and wish I did. Aspects that are cringy, sad, or just terrible. Uh, sorry about all that stuff in middle school, by the way. That was rough. But dudes, we're missing out on something. Uh, when we cringe desperately and try to forget all like the bad stuff that's happened, we're missing out on the good stuff too. Um, yes, there was good stuff. I firmly believe that good can be found everywhere, no matter how bad the event itself. Uh, let me give you some examples. Uh, the DC trip. I know everyone hated the bus rides to and back, hot weather, the marching, and the micro TV screens on the bus spouting Olivia Newton John's incessant screeching at 1 a.m. <laughs> hate that movie. Uh, but do you guys remember the museums? Uh, you remember hanging out in the dorms or out in the city with your friends? Or maybe you remember the somber atmosphere of the Holocaust Museum and the countless memorials we visited. Or that hysterical show we watched where a certain student on the taller side was called Harry Potter by one of the classmates. Remember that, Thompson? Um, or how about the spring days? Do you guys remember hanging out in the sunshine, signing one of those yearbooks? That was pretty nice. Uh, you remember in seventh grade when we made those goofy little books for the first graders and then had to read them to said first graders? Or the Hunger Mountain hike? Or I'll give you some more recent examples. How about the elation some of you felt when you got passing scores on your SATs? Or when you were accepted into your favorite college? Or second favorite college, or third favorite college? Or schoolwork. Yep, said it. Uh, you may remember being frustrated by homework. That seemed impossible. But do you remember the teachers that helped you every step of the way? I know I do, and that stuff still sticks with me even after like, what, a few years? Um, shout out to Carrie Wilson, by the way. Thanks for helping me with algebra too. That stuff was largely impossible and it still kind of is, so thanks, Carrie. I know that school, despite all the cringe, despite all the bad stuff, there's some good stuff I'll genuinely miss. Uh, robotics class, where we messed around with weird robot stuff. Um, bi biology, where I, where I explained in glorious detail the Tyrannosaurs rise to conquest of Asia and North America in front of my mortified classmates. <laughs> or horticulture, when Isaac and I tried in vain to maintain a veritable jungle of mustard greens and turnips that put the Amazon rainforest to shame. Or pilot, where I turned out no shortage of man-sized catfish and woolly mammoths and giant horse-eating birds. Um, or being accepted into Norwich's biology program, or writing for Ben Heinz in the Chronicle. You get the idea. So those are the things that I remember, and those are the things that I'll keep with me. But what are your memories? What are the things you'll keep with you? That's what I encourage everyone to think about tonight, even as you all burn your homework and drive off into the sunset. So remember this stuff. In our haste to forget the assorted miscellaneous cringe, Let's not forget these sort of cool stuff and good memories. Don't forget the fun times you had. Don't forget the teachers who helped you every step of the way. Don't forget the people who said hi to you in the hallways. Heck, don't even forget the classwork. Because all that stuff forged everyone here into the person they are now. Uh, one more thing, I'm going to close off with a request that I wrote down in the yearbook. If by chance anyone's uh, puttering around here 20, 30 years from now, stop by. Pay me a visit. I'll be hanging out on my front lawn, the one with the Tyrannosaurus skeleton out front. You'll recognize it in a heartbeat. Ignore the emus, tea is at four, and don't bother knocking. It's been a pleasure working with all of you. Thanks a lot, everyone, and may the force be with you. At this time, I would like to ask Ruby Singer to join me up here on the stage, or I guess at the podium, to introduce our guest speaker for this evening. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm here to introduce our guest speaker. This speaker came to U32 six years ago, just like the graduating class you see before you. 
which is why we are so happy to have her speak at the closing of this chapter of our lives. She is someone who has shown time and time again her love for this school through her bright spirit in and outside of the library. She is the smile that greets you at the door, the enthusiasm in your corner, and the good book in your hand. But what I love most about this speaker is her true passion for connecting to us students. So, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our librarian, our speaker, and I'm happy to say, our friend, Meg Allison. Greetings, parents, family, and friends, and congratulations to this radiant class of 2021. Thank you for giving me one of the greatest honors of my career to be your commencement speaker. I'm a flawed, profoundly imperfect, but humble and happy human being, and I am delighted and only slightly terrified to be speaking to you tonight, my students and I'm really, really happy that you all returned your overdue library books, or otherwise you wouldn't be sitting here at all. <laughs> Good job on that. I have asked some of you what, what you wanted to hear from me tonight. Avery told me to be inspiring, and Nora advised me to just be myself and speak from my heart. And at the end of the day, that's all I've really got, my friends. My heart and a library full of books that inspire us to grow into our better selves. So, as Ruby was saying, many of you know I started U32 the same year as you in August of 2015. We kind of showed up here together. Many of you know me as your librarian, some have known me as a coach, a few as a mentor, and a small special group has known me as my TA. But way before all of this, I was a children's librarian at the Calico Library in Montpelier. And it wasn't until our very first open house in the seventh grade that I realized that I knew many of you from my story times. But it wasn't because I recognized you. It was because I recognized your parents. Now your parents, like me, had gotten more wrinkles and more gray hair, but suddenly it all fell into place. I began to feel like I too belonged here and that I belonged here alongside all of you. Well, these last 15 months have been tumultuous and unsettling, not just with the massive disruption of the pandemic, but also feeling that we as a people have become irreconcilably divided, that we can't trust our leaders, that our injustices of oppression, of oppression seem insurmountable, or that world leaders have forsaken planet Earth for the good of the few. So I'm going to offer you an antidote and a tool that you can use for wellness and wisdom for the rest of your lives you can always travel back to a children's book. When you begin to lose your focus or sense of purpose or playfulness, read or listen to a children's book. I know some of you are looking at me like, come on, Meg, we just graduated from high school. It's time to move on. But here's the thing. That's how you're going to tap into the magic. There will always be Hogwarts, Narnia, Middle Earth. And no matter how fantastical the story, you can always find a thread of your story in someone else's story. And when you find that connection, well, that becomes the basis of our common humanity. It's really all that simple. Our stories and our willingness to listen to each other's stories is what matters, especially in a culture that is trying very hard to divide us and filter out others that don't think like us or who aren't like us at all. So there are three children's books that I'm gonna draw upon for this celebratory occasion. Think of these as your final library lesson. It was hard to choose only three. Some of you will commiserate with me. Only three books, Meg? It's like when you come into the library and you ask me for one book recommendation and like 10 minutes later, you're leaving with a stack. <laughs> so I promise you this, the terrific class of 2021, only three books, three lessons, and then off I'll go back into the stacks, and off you'll go out into the world. Lesson number one, it's from Harry Potter. Yeah. Professor Dumbledore teaches us that 
It takes a great deal of bravery to stand up to our enemies, but just as much to stand up to our friends. Standing up to your friends can be tough. We are friends with people because we share connections, experience, laughter, and a special bond. We love our friends. I mean, that's why we have them. So many of you have built such beautiful friendships with each other. From the core four to the boys, from friendships built as cast members and teammates. The truth is, most of us just go along with things just to get along and not cause conflict. Love makes us inclined to just avoid conflict, and the truth of things about those we love can be very hard to face. We have a tendency to withdraw rather than challenge those that are close to us. However, Dumbledore knows that it's not always the best way to go about things. He is teaching us that our inner integrity is perhaps the most essential part of our core and that being honest with a friend takes a lot of courage. If we are to succeed at being the best versions of ourselves, we have to learn how to lean into conflict with those closest to us, and most especially when it means going against the status quo. Put your trust in Professor Dumbledore's wisdom. Help each other become accountable for the mistakes you've made. This is how we begin to heal and grow together stronger, individually and collectively. Every single day, ask yourselves, what am I willing to stand up for? Lesson number two is coming to you from Charlotte's Web by Evie White. So to jog your memory, that's the story about the pig and the spider. You have been my friend, replied Charlotte. That in itself is a tremendous thing. After all, what's a life anyway? We are born, we live a little, and then we die. What can we learn from Charlotte's Web? From the very first line, we know that things aren't looking too good for poor old Wilbur. He's a pig, and well, that bacon in the cafeteria on Bacon Friday y'all love so much has to come from somewhere. Of course, Pa is going off to, the slot to slaughter the runs of the litter because as the mother puts it, he's very small and weak and he'll never amount to anything. Well, Fern steps into the action declaring this the most terrible injustice that she's ever seen. And as children listening to the story, we not just feel Fern's desperation to save him, but we also feel Wilbur's despair. He just wants to live for the love of God. So. An agreement is made for him to live on Zuckerman's farm, but only temporarily, his butchering date simply being put off until he fattens up. Well, struggling with loneliness and rejection, he just wants love. He wants a friend, but none of the other barn animals are interested. Then, hanging just out of sight of the barn rafters, is a common gray spider, and she offers to be his friend. And in doing so, she saves Wilbur not just from the axe, but from himself. She weaves proclamations about Wilbur into her webs. Some pig, terrific, radiant, humble. And before you know it, he becomes Zuckerman's famous pig and his life is saved. And what did it take to change the course of his destiny? Charlotte sees him. He mattered to her. And then he starts to believe it too. Yet despite this tender friendship, in the end, Charlotte dies alone. Oh. Brutal, right? <laughs> That's children's books for you. But it's so honest, isn't it? Charlotte's Web is a story about the cycle of life by dealing directly with the reality of death. And in telling this story, E.B. White imparts wisdom to us about how to create a meaningful life. What it teaches us is existential and that deep down in the marrow of our bones, we know that we are born, that we get to live a little, and then when our time comes, far, far off in the future, we die. What Charlotte teaches us is that the true path to our purpose, and thus our happiness, is in helping others. And that the small act of showing up for someone can be a matter of literally life or death just like you showed up for each other these past 15 months, months in such big and small ways, you reminded each other that you mattered. Some of you are here because your friends saw you and reached out when you were in despair. You are here 
thank God you are all here. The final lesson, number three, is from Where the Wild Things Are by Maura Sendak. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus start. Let the wild rumpus start indeed. Let's whoop it up, my friends, whoop it up. Yes, you made it. You're graduating, my friends. Right here, right now, this June feels so much more liberating and hopeful than last year's graduation when we were still in the great unknown with the pandemic and things were only projected to get worse and there was no vaccine in sight. And we were also experiencing a traumatic racial reckoning as a nation with people taking to the streets by the million to demand police accountability. Things seemed as if they would not hold as a nation, as a community, within our own hearts. And now, Vermont has achieved a feat no other state has done. More than 80% of us are vaccinated and everything seems to be opening up at last. And just yesterday, a new federal holiday was signed into law, making Juneteenth a national holiday commemorating the end of slavery and making remembrance of a painful past a shared experience. And there is indeed so much to celebrate and look forward to. Things that we might once have taken for granted, we no longer do. So, members of the humble class of 2021, what Max teaches us is that there's always a little time to let loose, to go a little wild. And this is one of those times. It is time to celebrate all your accomplishments. But before you start to party, do you remember how the book ends? So yeah, Max has a little bit of fun and then he returns home. Why does Max return home? After all, he was pretty pissed at his mother and stomped off to his room in a huff, only to be transported to a magical place where he could make a wild rumpus without a care in the world. Why leave that place of freedom and frolic? Why be tied down to places where there are expectations and rules? I think it's because after the rumpus was over, it was time to go home. And at home, that's where Max was loved supper was waiting for him, where it was still warm. We are part of the universe, my friends, a part of something much bigger than all of this. Now is the time for you each to create something new. Have thrilling adventures and explore new lands. Help others with less power than you along the way and make space at the table for everyone to join in the feast learn that conflict helps us grow and lean into discomfort of not knowing all the answers because that's how we become wiser. From time to time, tap into that sense of childlike wonder that is in all of you, that's still within me, and take in the world not as bored tourists, but as wide-eyed wanderers. Life is really one heck of a wild and precious ride. And always remember, home is where the heart is, no matter how big or grown you get. So please come back and visit every now and then. It'll be no problem at all to warm up your suppers. So, until we meet again, may you be happy. May you be healthy. May you experience joy. May you be free. May you be loved. And from the bottom of all of our hearts, congratulations to you, the terrific, radiant, humble class of 2021. Now let's get this wild rumpus started. All right, thank you, Meg. At this time, we are going to present an award that is usually given at an awards night, but for this year, we've included it into our graduation ceremony. Um, also, please, collective will of everybody to keep the rain away for just a little bit longer for us. Um, but we would like to present this award tonight because we had a virtual award ceremony for our seniors. And for this, I would like to invite Nick Holquist up to give our TA award.
Hello, everyone. I've been blessed with the most incredible group of TAs, and I'm immensely grateful to have had the opportunity to know each of them on a personal level. I feel especially lucky to get to know Aaron Levine. He's an inspiration to me. I could not be prouder of this young man. When I first got to know him in seventh grade, I never imagined that he would become the thoughtful, determined, and academically proficient young man that I now know today. He has overcome many obstacles, both personal and academic, because of his determination to succeed. He never wanted any extra help and insisted that all of us help him to the highest of standards. I would like to thank his family, all of his teachers, coaches, and administrators who have helped support him over these last six years. Aaron, you have truly come a long way. Congratulations, Aaron, and thank you, Nick. At this time, I would like to invite Floor D.S. Smith, our board chair, to present the Gahagan Award. Good evening, everybody. Buenas noches. I am grateful to be able to share this ceremony with all of you as we all continue to rise through this global pandemic. I am honored to be here and present the Gehagen Award. Here is a little history. The Gehagen Award was created in 2000 in honor of Jackie Gehagen, who was a teacher and an associate principal of U32 from 1971 when the doors first opened until 2000. Jackie believed that this school called on all its students to be caring, involved people willing to contribute to the betterment of the school by supporting and reaching out to others. While uh, developing their own personal sense of self, we present this award each year to that graduating senior who best exemplifies the true spirit of U32. So each year, the actual Gehenan Award, a gift to the recipient varies intended to be a very special gift that also recognizes the extraordinary talent at U32. The award itself is a piece of art created by a U32 student, artist, or a woodworker. This is, usually, this is an unusual year for the arts at U32. We had many talented artists create beautiful artwork, often as means of responding to the difficulties of this year and challenging those problems with positive solutions and perseverance. Our country and our world face significant problems that we, that we could only imagine coming to surface in your art. An unusual year called for an unusual process in selecting the Gehagen Award. In a normal year, we will select a senior artist to present their work to the recipient of the award. But what do you know when the recipient is one of those artists? As you can imagine, the overall artwork produced this year had themes of darkness, pain, and upheaval. And while this winner of this award is known to work through all these barriers with strength and fortitude, we wanted to make sure the artwork chosen highlighted those characteristics. We chose to celebrate the student and the artist by reaching back to his own artwork created last year. Before the pandemic hit, as an artist, this senior is exuberant, experimental, and exciting. In photography, he pushes his boundaries of portrait by balancing light and dark. His contagious personality helps push his peers to try new things and his curiosity continues to challenge the curriculum at U32. It is our pleasure and my honor 
to award the 2000 Gahagan Award in behalf of the school board to Noah Francis McLean. individual comments about Noah from those who know him. Noah is funny, outgoing, personable, kind, honest, ethical, moral, hardworking, and responsible. He thinks about other people and generally cares for their well-being. Noah uses his engaging, magnetic personality to bring others in. Noah is a tireless worker, a student leader, a person who truly wraps himself within the values of the U32 community. Noah is like the mayor of U32. <laughs> Everyone knows him. You can find him socializing and chatting with anyone in and out of the building anytime. He's inclusive of all groups. Noah challenged himself to take several AP level courses this year. Ending with a 3.2 GPA, did excellent work with everyone. community-based learning internships in sports broadcasting and journalism. He was a four-sport varsity athlete, soccer, basketball, track field, and baseball. Volunteer at U32 for many activities, such as mentoring, meet your PA night, and was a unified sports peers coach. Noah has also a, was also a member of Seeking Social Justice and was on the Youth Book Committee. Noah was selected to represent U32 at the Vermont Student Athlete Leadership Conference and was an American Legion Voice State Program participant. When Noah McLean leaves U32, it will be a tremendous loss to our school and local community. Noah has a level of caring and compassion that you do not often see in high school age students. And I can only hope that other students will follow his example. While many students gain recognition for what they do in the classroom or the field, and Noah is one of those students, is what he does outside those areas that set him apart. Finally, Daisy, Noah's PA, says it best. And I quote, Noah is the type of human being that we, sh that we should all aspire to be, one that cares without judgment or prerequisites. He is naturally motivated to do what is right and just. He wants everyone to feel good about themselves, cared for, important. He shows this by never leaving anyone alone, or regardless of their age group or social standing. He's someone I am proud to know and have my children know. When it comes down to what is really important, being kind, socially aware, compassionate, human being, Noah has it all. Noah McLean is an extraordinary student, one that represents us as a whole, as an artist, a learner, a spirit. Noah puts his whole heart in everything he does. We wish you the best of luck as you head off to the University of Rhode Island, where you will be studying broadcast. In sports. Congratulations, Noah. I would really appreciate it. artists and the recipient. All right, we're going to power through. At this time, I would like to invite Scott Thompson, a WCU USD school board member, and Brian Olkowski, superintendent, to the stage. This year, Claire Obadoble and May Lamb will read the names of the students receiving their diploma. And joining them is the senior class advisor, Heather Clark Warner. We're going to hold off the rain. We're going to make it.
I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Mark Chaplin to the stage. <laughs> Augustus William Franklin Beatty. <laughs> Jaden Riley Bonanno. <laughs> Seth Hunter Dunham. <laughs> Cole Higgis. Alex A. Karen. Anna Tucker Noss. Carter Little. Cameron James McLeod. Jacob McCoy. Nathaniel Allen Rice. I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Beatrice David to the stage. Samantha Tracy Adams Green. Holly Abigail Lampson. Bruce Pandia. Hannah R. Ray. Alexander John Saunders. Silas Marcus Van Houten Shekel. June Sullivan Kempel. <laughs> Damian A. Thomas. <laughs> I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Ann Decker to the stage. Leo James Choppy. Jack Thomas Horton. <laughs> Avery Taylor Fournier. Bridget Marie Grant. Aiden Hawkins. Ireland N. Hayes. Tyler Daniel Heading. Lilia May Lamb. Mary Lorden. August Davis Thompson. I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Krista D to the stage. Alec D. Benedict. Leah Catherine Brown. Alyssa Marie Kors. Henry DeGroote. <laughs> Olivia Erin Durrett. <laughs> Skylar Ray Flood. <laughs> Peyton Garibaldi and joining Peyton is her mom, Lisa Garibaldi, East Montclair Elementary Kindergarten teacher. Taylor and joining 
Maxine is her dad, Jack Taylor. He's a player, elementary care educator. Cameron Thompson. And joining Cameron is his dad, Scott Thompson, WCUSD board member. Jasmine Elizabeth Toro. Trevor Walker Clayton. Welcome School Board Chair Flora Diaz-Smith to the stage. I'd like to welcome Teacher Advisor Madeline Del Rudy to the stage. Grace Margaret Robert Hill. I'd like to welcome Teacher Advisor Adam French to the stage. Yeah, Frenchie! Seth Harold Dusso. Grace Johnson. James Jackson Curley. Tegan Brandy LaPan. Oh, Hayden Pierce. Right, oh, Ava Grace Popow. Oh, Ruby Singer. Oh, Victoria Ashley Vogel. I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Nick Holquist to the stage. Julia Marie Chase. Grayson Rao Davis. Casey Noel Fly. Elizabeth Ann Guthrie. Ariana Hawkins. Aaron Joseph Levine. Kendra Ray Morse. Nora Quinn Ryan. <laughs> Elizabeth Vivian Young. I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Nate Lovitz to the stage. Jacob G. Bazazaro. River Willem Bond. Sean's Hart Fervor. Annabelle Erica Gascoigne. Lilia Krasno. Kayla L. Martin. Jacob R. Miller Arsenault. Yeah. Claire Oval Dobla. Calista yeah. Jane Parton. Yeah. Gabriel John Van Hoy. Oh boy, yeah. Dylan Walker Clayton. I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Christiana Martin to the stage. Caitlin Marie Chevalier. Patrick 
Lawrence Chompy. Lucy Krokenberger. Jed Hayward Kurtz. Yara Mosquita. Luke Donovan Morris. John Tor William Nordenson. Jordan Price. Kylie Elaine Rowland. Please welcome school board member Kari Bradley to the stage. I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Amy Molina, former teacher advisor Kenny Sachs, and paraeducator Laura Guerin to the stage. Peter H. Brown. Sorry. Cadence L. Burgess. Connor J. DeRosia. Welch. Landon L. Flood. Eliza Florence Garland. Nolan Michael White Hudson. Owen Chase Kellington. Ashlyn Maple Perry. <laughs> Sierra May Fremont. <laughs> I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Georgia Roy to the stage. Niels Jeffrey Young. I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Daisy Scarzello to the stage. Bethany K. Archer Atwood. Daniel Emmons. <laughs> Maxwell Connor Fair. <laughs> Isabel Celia Botorea Giamuso. <laughs> Faith Autumn Hall. Caroline Kirby. Yeah. Logan I. Luce. Yeah. Noah Francis McLean, and joining Noah is his mom, Megan McLean, WCUUSC Occupational Therapist. Savannah Ray Premont. Christian John Strasberg. <laughs> Sasha R. Stutter Kennedy. <laughs> Sage Elizabeth Winner. <laughs> Tristan Blumenthal. I'd like to welcome teacher advisor Chris Williams to the stage. Caitlin Rose Dodge Prescott.
Anthony Hayden Engelhardt. Yeah. Isaac Alexander Fairbanks. Yeah. Carmen Elizabeth Gallagher. Yeah. Aubrey Olivia Granboy. Delaney Grace Hill. Anya Laura Keen. Hans Krokenberger. Jacob Paul Lighty. Alex James Schokel. Lucas B. Winters. chairs because there's also cards from your teachers from your time here at U32 that they're sending you off with some uh, congratulations and if I could have you rise no don't look at your envelopes now look at that in the car it's raining I just want you to know that it's there okay so family, friends, everybody who's here, I present to you the graduating class from U32 of 2021. So we confer upon them all of the rights and responsibilities associated with that diploma, and we wish you the best years ahead. And so without further ado, one more round of applause for our graduates. Thank you all for being here today in this wonderful setting. And they've never marched out before, so they are now our graduates. We love you. Be safe. Have a great summer. And we'll be back in the fall with regular school.